everyone, my name is Amber Ray. Welcome to Card Making Project 560. Today we're going to make a non-traditional coloured Christmas card. And I think this is so beautiful, it's very pretty. And we're going to use lots of pastel tones for this, as well as our Anna Griffin supplies. Everything I do use, I should put in a detailed list on my blog, so please be sure to check it out. There's also lots of photos on there as well. Now, when you're watching the videos from now on, at the end of the video, my head will pop up in one of the corners. And if you click on it, you will be able to subscribe to YouTube and then you'll get notifications of when new tutorials are available. Please feel free to share with your crafty friends and you can always find me on Instagram, on Facebook. Say hello on Facebook. And uh, there's also Twitter as well. All the links are at the end of the video. So without further ado, please sit back and relax and let's have a look at today's absolutely stunning Christmas card tutorial. So for today's tutorial we're going to use quite a few different things from our Anna Griffin stash. The first thing that we're going to use are some um, sentiment stamps. Now these haven't been available in the UK, they're the Christmas Say It Anyway stamps. You might have other stamps that would work equally as well. So don't fret if you haven't got these. Just check what you have got and find a substitute. We're going to be using the one that says May Your Holiday be Merry and Bright. And that's going to be for the insert. We're also going to use one that says Warm Winter Wishes and that's for the outside of our card. Next, we're going to use the Treasury Set the feline treasury set and I know what you're all thinking you're all thinking but this is Christmas yes it is but we're going to use the pinched frame we're going to use the inside and the outside uh, for the outside of our card it just makes a great matte and layer for the sentiment so I thought we'll include that one and then we're going to use the ruffle cut and emboss dies we're going to use the large shadow die we're going to use the inner large ruffle and we are going to use the plain oval, the medium middle oval. So those are the cut and emboss ruffle dies. We're also going to use the mini botanical Christmas dies from Anna. Now again these haven't been in the UK however you would be able to substitute these with any of your Christmas dies that you've got with poinsettias on. We're looking for poinsettias, holly and a little bit of greenery. However, this card's a little bit different because we're going to use all pastel colours. But anything you've got to substitute those would work equally as well. So the first thing I want to do is to show you how to make the actual poinsettia. The poinsettias that we're going to use are these that I've used the dies with and this will work with any of your layered poinsettia dies that you have whether they're Anna's or a different brand. Now what I've done is I've cut out the three layers so I've die cut the three layers and then for the centre I've used a punch and I've punched a circle, it's just a tiny punch. You could use circle nesting dies, whatever you've got, the punch is not an Anna punch. And then I've stamped a pattern across the top of the circle, I don't know if you can see that close enough. I have taken some photos of this and I'm going to put it on my blog. There you go, you can see that now. So the centre has a little bit of texture and all I've done is I've used a stamp, could be any stamp that has a tiny pattern on. I've stamped it and then I've heat embossed it with gold over the top of the gold satin foil cardstock from Anna. So it could be any stamp, it could be any embossing powder, it doesn't have to be Anna's. I haven't used Anna's for this. This is just a stamp I've got in my stash that's got a tiny pattern on it. And I've taken photos of the process of how I've made the circle. So I've die cut the three layers of the poinsettia. And from the die, this is the die, 
you also get the leaf as well so I've put the leaves to one side I've got those here we're going to use those as well but I've put those to one side I'm going to be using some silicone glue for this only for quickness to show you how to put everything together you can use 3d foam I've actually used 3d foam on mine to put them together but we're going to use silicone to put them on the card today just for something a little bit different to get some height between the flowers and the leaves etc so we've die cut the three layers we've got the large the medium and the small now what I do is I've got my pokey tool I take the large layer and I simply squeeze the petals around the pokey tool shaft so it's just giving it a little bit of shape I put the pokey tool from the edge to the center and then squeeze and that gives just a little bit of shape to the petals of the flower the middle layer I take the pokey tool and I just curl the edge and I curl it into the center like that then I just squeeze the petals upwards a little bit the smallest layer I do a little bit of both I curl and then kind of fold to the center oops so it's curl and then fold and curl and then push the center up so I've got three layers all a little bit different and then I can make the actual poinsettia so on the base layer I'm just going to add a touch of glue and I'm going to add skew if so not all the petals go at the same angle I'm adding the second layer I'm going to add a little bit more glue as I say you can use 3d foam I'm just using this because I've already got the silicone glue ready for making the card front our next layer goes in again at an angle of the previous layer so the petals don't match in height and then our final layer a little bit more glue we can add the center and we'll just pop that on and then ruffle those petals a little bit there we go and that is our poinsettia ready to go on the front of the card with the other ones so i can put that to one side to dry normally using silicone glue it takes maybe half an hour to an hour and if you use 3d foam obviously it's dry instantly now we can make our card so we're going to be using a 7x5 inch card this is just a blank ivory card don't forget to stamp it on the back with your handmade by stamps add your name you can add the date if you want to or you can add more details less details made for you by Anne Marie in 2019 I always add my project number so then that keeps me right as it were for when I'm displaying them and showing you pictures etc so I'm going to use my bone folder from the Anna Griffin tool collection set just to make sure that that crease is a nice sharp crease and we're going to create the inside first now for the inside I'm starting with the base layer from the spring plaid card stock I've got flat tape on the back of it I've cut it to fit the layer less than about a quarter of an inch so it gives a nice border on the inside of the card there we go 
and I'm just going to place it through the centre of the card. Now I know you all like the ideas for the insides and I think this is a really nice quick and simple one and I think it's really pretty as well. Now because we're using the ruffle dies, I've ruffle cut the shadow layer and I've used the gold foil cardstock, the shiny from Anna Griffey. I've got flat tape on the back and I haven't cut or kept a layer from the spring plaid. Um, not for any particular reason. If you're wanting to be economical, you could cut a bit of the centre out to use it on a different project. I haven't on this occasion. So I can add the shadow layer from the ruffle die set through the centre of our card and then press it down. Our next layer is from the Anna Griffin Perfect Palette collection. I've used the actual ornate ruffle die and cut out the ruffle in a pink cardstock and I've stamped it using the Say, um, the say It Anyway stamps and then that way it's going to match to the front of the card and I've used gold ink and gold heat embossing powder so you can see how pretty that looks. I've got flat tape on the back so I can just peel the tape away and then we can place this over our base layer of the gold foil. There we go. And this will give us a nice little bit of room to be able to write our message, our tune from, etc. And look how classy that looks. It's just so pretty for an inside. Anybody will they'll open it and they'll go, oh wow, that's gorgeous. Because they'll have seen the front already and they'll be saying, oh, you know, that's stunning. So let's use our bone folder again to make sure we've still got a nice sharp crease along the top before we go ahead and create the front of the card. Now for the front of the card, I've got a piece of the, um, the, the spring plaid card stock in the pink, same as we use for the inside. On this occasion, I have been economical with this one and I've taken a die of the oval, which we're going to use a little bit further on on the front. So don't worry if you do this because you won't be able to tell because we've got lots of layers going on top of it. So don't be frightened to be economical. And if you don't want to be economical, that's fine. If you want all your layers the same width, height, dimension, etc., that's totally up to you so this again is cut about quarter of an inch smaller than the actual card base just to be able to give a little bit of a border around the edge so I'm placing this through the center of the card and then I can press it down our next layer is again the shiny gold file and it's the shadow layer of the actual um, ornate cut, um, ruffle cut and emboss there we go get there in the end I've got 3d foam on the back and I'm just going to position this through the center like we did for the inside there we go press that down my next layer is the satin gold cardstock from Anna Griffin and this is on 3d foam in the center and I'm just going to press it down on top of our previous layer. Now I've caught mine here, um, my own fault, I've just caught it slightly, but don't worry because you won't see that when we're finished. So our next layer is the oval layer of the, sp uh, the spring plaid cardstock that we had at the beginning. Try saying that if you've had a Christmas tipple. I've got flat tape on the back of it. Not that I've had a Christmas tipple yet. I've got flat tape on the back of it. So I'm just going to add that through the centre of our previous layer like that and press it down. Next I'm actually going to add my sentiments. I'm going to add them now rather than at the end. So this is where we've used the feline treasury set 
and I've used the pinch die um, for the frame. I've die cut one in a pastel blue and one in the pastel pink and then I've used the Say It Anyway stamps for the Warm Winter Wishes stamp on the top. Heat embossed it with gold embossing powder and I've got 3D foam on the back of both of them and I'm putting one on top of the other like that to build a nice matte and layer. And I'm going to put this kind of in the centre but just kind of towards the bottom a little bit. There we go. Now we can build up our array of gorgeous poinsettias. Now I've used three different colours. I've used the pastel green from the Perfect Palette collection from Anna. Now that's an old set of cardstock, but I think this it really works. And then I've used the blue and the pink. And it's from the Everyday collection. And it's just, I think it just works so well. So I've cut probably too many of the poinsettias out. I don't know how many we're going to need. And then for the greenery, the foliage, the foliage, great word. I have cut, actually it's foliage, not foliage. This is foliage because it's foil cardstock. So we can go with that. Nobody has to correct me now. So for the for our foliage, I've used the gold shiny cardstock from Anna. So we're going to start using our silicone glue for this. Now I'm using this because I want a little bit of height to it and it's for quickness and I just think you can get sometimes a little bit more movement with the silicone. So I'm going to start and add the holly leaves and I'm going to add those just to one side, the double holly leaves and just adding a little bit of the silicone on the back of them and for anybody like me that likes symmetrical this is going to be great. Now you don't have to write in to tell me that some of my holly leaves aren't perfect because you're not going to see this little bit. You're only going to see the top of the leaves. So it doesn't really matter about that. Next, we've got the single holly leaf. And I'm thinking that will go perfect about there in the centre. Now I haven't planned this one. So I'm just thinking where these are going to go as we do it. Next, our foliage, <laughs> we'll just add a little bit of silicone on the back and we'll add one piece I think there and this is the, these are the long pieces of foliage or as we call it now foliage. There we go, that's the second piece. Um, you can see how you've got height between the layers now. So I haven't curled these or anything. I'm just adding them to on top of the leaves because the flowers will then sit on top and it will hide the glue and hide a multitude of sins. Now, because I'm very, um, I like things very symmetrical. I'm going to go with a blue flower in the centre, like so. And then I'm going to go with two pink flowers towards the outer edges, like that. And see, they cover the bottom of the foliage and it covers where the glue was. Now I've got the extra leaves that we die cut when we made the poinsettias. I'm going to add a blue leaf to the back of the pink one there like that and a blue leaf to the back 
of the pink one at this side like so and then two pink leaves in the center now the beauty of using silicone is the fact that because you've placed everything you can slightly lift it and slide something underneath it you can position everything and get it perfect and then leave it to dry it's knowing when to stop it's knowing what what to add where and then leaving it to dry that's the beauty of it I think now lastly I'm going to add a little bow underneath the actual sentiment I could have added a blue one and as if by magic I have a blue one and I think the blue one would work I think the pink one would work I'm going for impact today and I'm going to go for pink I know it's a Christmas card and it's something completely different and I think the pink will work I've got 3D foam on the back of my bow and it's at the back of the bow section, not on the tails. And then I'm just simply going to position it underneath the sentiment there. Press it down. Now I need to set this to dry. I'm going to show you the inside very quickly because I don't want anything to slip off. So our inside matches perfectly to the outside. I'll risk doing that. It stands up perfectly. And what a pretty card. I love those colours, the pastels. They look so great together. It's a, such a gorgeous mix. You can see the height that we've got from using the silicone. And I just think if you were to make a box or put that in a larger envelope with a little bit of padding, the person, in fact, do you know what? You would hand deliver something like this. I would actually get some craft paper and wrap it and maybe stamp sentiments on the outside of the craft paper and add a little tag with another poinsettia. But I just love the colourways, the pink and the gold and the blue, the pastels, it just all works so well. Please check my blog for all the details of the items that I've used and for photos and for the extra photos of how I've made the poinsettia centres. It is a pretty card and the, these next couple of projects, today, Friday, next Monday, next Friday, are all kind of like very special cards that you would hand deliver to people, that you would make for people that you think a lot of. And uh, I just hope you enjoy them all. So please check the blog, please share with your crafty friends, please give me the thumbs up and comment on Facebook, let me know what you think. Is this just the prettiest Christmas card? And I would just like to say thank you so much for watching. I shall see you next time.